I'm making my first ever Steam game and when I started developing it, I decided not to use an engine. Was that a good idea? The short answer is no. And the long answer is no. <laughs> the long answer is a bit more nuanced than that. So in this video, I'm gonna break down why I decided to go down this route and how that's impacted my game's development. And if you're considering going down a similar route of making your own engine, hopefully this video can at least explain what you're getting yourself into and maybe persuade you to go a different route. And of course, right from the start, I need to acknowledge that this is me talking about my own experience as a solo developer working on a commercial game. So this advice might not apply to you if you're not in that camp. And in fact, I think there's a few situations where making your own engine can actually be really beneficial, but I'll get into that a bit later. And at the end of the day, the decision of whether or not to make your own engine just comes down to your goals. My goal with this game is to get my first Steam release under my belt so I know what I'm in for for future games and I've made that so much harder for myself by making my own engine. By the way, the game I'm working on is called Star Mining Co and it's a roguelike where you use your upgradable super drill to carve your way through asteroids, making a profit for your corporate overlords. There's a link in the description to wishlist the game so you'll get notified when I release it and there's also an open playtest at the moment that you can join if you'd like to get a little sneak peek of the action. So if my goal was to release a game, how did I delude myself into making my own engine in the first place? There were three main traps that I fell into. Firstly, I convinced myself that it would be better to stick to what I already know. When I've made little prototypes in the past, I've always just made them from scratch rather than bothering to learn how to use a game engine. I figured it would probably take me longer to learn how to use an engine than it would to just roll my own like I've always done in the past. Now, obviously this sounds completely insane, but it's actually really easy to overlook how much an engine's giving you. When you're making things from scratch, you can get some sprites moving around on the screen really quickly and then start adding gameplay basically in one day. So it's really easy to fall into a false sense of security of how fast you can get things done. If I had my time over again, I would absolutely just make the effort to learn to use an engine. Obviously, there's a bit of a time investment as there is with learning anything new. However, it would save me so much time, not only in Star Mining Co, but every game I make moving forward. So obviously this is on me and I should have taken the time to think critically about what I'm trying to achieve and what the best tool to achieve that job is. And for me, that is using a game engine and that's something I should have figured out earlier. That is a decision that you will have to make for yourself. You'll have to figure out which tool is the best for the job. For me, I should have just bitten the bullet and learned to use a game engine. Of course, it's not always better to learn a new tool though. A lot of people will tell themselves that they can't make a game until they learn some new tool, but they've already got the tools they need to make a game. And you don't wanna let that hold you back from making games. However, you do need to think about if the tool you're using is gonna work for you. For example, if I wanna cut a tree down, the brand of ax I'm using doesn't really matter as long as I'm just using an ax in the first place. And <laughs> At the moment, I am not using an ax. I'm just minecrafting that. <laughs> My second bit of reasoning was that my game is unique and so a game engine wouldn't really fit what I'm trying to do anyway and this is completely delusional. Sure, my game does some funky things with images and shaders for per pixel terrain destruction but any game engine can handle a few shaders. And in all likelihood, the game that you're wanting to make doesn't actually require a completely bespoke engine either. Of course, there are exceptions to this, things like voxels or Noita that's completely simulated will struggle maybe to be made inside an engine. But the thing you've got to consider as well is that there are completely open source engines out there like Godot. So you can go and twiddle the source code and make the engine work for what you're trying to do, but save yourself all the work of building an entire engine from the ground up. So again, you're gonna to have to use your judgment on this, but I would say that the vast majority of games that you're wanting to make will be able to be made inside a game engine. And even if it can't, you can go down the route of customizing an open source engine and making it work for you. There's no need to completely reinvent the wheel and make an engine from the ground up. The third trap I fell into is to do with ego. And I think that programmer culture really idolizes people that make their own engine. It's a way to flex your programming skills and to one up people that are only making a game. Of course, I don't actually think I'm better than people that are only making a game, but I do think that there was an element of imposter syndrome that led me to go down this path. And if we apply this sort of logic to another field, say knitting, you can see how completely silly it is. No one tells someone that's knitted a jumper, they haven't actually knitted a jumper because they started with with wool and yarn, you don't have to go and raise sheep in order to make a knitted jumper. And in fact, you'll be a lot better at knitting if you just focus on knitting jumpers rather than trying to raise sheep and spin yarn. 
The other thing to consider is that players don't care how the game is made. All they want is something that's fun to play and not a buggy mess. And that's so much easier to do inside an engine than making one yourself. And if you never release a game because you're constantly working on an engine, then you're never even gonna get players in the first place. And my idea of what game dev is aligns so much more with getting games out the door than it does with endlessly working on an engine and never releasing anything. So while it might help the imposter syndrome in the short term, you've got to ask yourself again what your goals are. Are you trying to impress other devs or are you trying to make games and release them to actual players? So those were the three main traps that I fell into when deciding to make my own engine. And hopefully I've shown that for my particular situation, it doesn't make any sense why I decided to do this. And I'm guessing that for 99% of people out there, their situation will also not make sense to make their own game engine. If there are any traps that you've fallen into or you know someone who's fallen into that I haven't covered, I would love to know them. So let me know in the comments. I now just wanna quickly talk about how this decision has actually impacted my development of Star Mining Co. Instead of being able to focus on making the game I want, I have to spend so much time making my game engine capable of making the game that I want. For example, I wanted to add some nice post-processing effects the other day. So a bloom and a vignette. And in a game engine that would have just been writing the shaders and moving on, or potentially even just hitting a switch. But for me, I didn't have any post-processing stuff set up yet. So I had to build all of that from the ground up and then write my shaders, and then I could be done with that task. And on its own, that doesn't really sound like that big of a deal, but this is happening across the board everywhere in the game engine. If you want collision detection, you gotta make it yourself. If you want pathfinding, same thing. If you want particles, UI, controller support, animations, sound, the list goes on. Basically what this means is there's so much friction on my creativity. When I sit down at my computer to work on some fun new gameplay feature, there's often an engine shaped roadblock in my path. So I have to take off my game designer hat with all the ideas and inspiration that goes along with that and put my engine programmer hat on. And this really kills the momentum because game design and engine programming require vastly different parts of my brain. The other thing to consider is you've probably only got limited amount of time that you can spend on making your game. And I wanna be spending that time personally on making the game and not making the engine. If I'd spent all the time that I've spent on my project this far only on the gameplay and polishing, I would quite frankly have a much better game on my hands. If the goal is to make games, then I urge you to focus on just the game making part of it. Game engine programming is a completely whole nother beast. There's so much time and effort spent reinventing the wheel that could have either made your game better or shipped it out the door sooner, both of which serve my goals of making games so much better. So with all of that said, it might sound like I'm completely shitting on people that decide to make their own games. And I guess in a way I am, but I'm very specifically shitting on myself for making me do all this extra work. Having said that though, I don't think it's universally the wrong decision. Like I've said so many times now, my focus is on making games, but some people genuinely enjoy and want to pursue engine programming. And if that's you, I think you should absolutely go for it. I think making your own engine is a fantastic way of improving not only your game design skills, but your programming skills in general, because there are so many different challenges and interesting algorithms that you get to tackle on the behind the scenes stuff. And I think Honestly, that's probably another reason why I got drawn to it as a programmer is there's just so much to sink your teeth into. Another great way of becoming a better programmer by building things from scratch is by using today's sponsor, Code Crafters. Code Crafters offers some really unique coding challenges such as building your own Git or Docker with pretty much any language that you'd like. The challenges are available online with all the information you need to get started, but the best part is you actually get to do the coding in your own environment and then you can just push your code to Git and they will auto mark it for you. The challenges are available in a variety of difficulties, so if you're just learning a new language, it can be a great way to do that, or you can take your existing language knowledge to the next level using Code Crafters. So help support the channel by going to the link in the description for a free week of Code Crafters and get 40% off if you decide to sign up. Cheers. Making games from scratch can also be so much fun. If you're making games just for the fun of it and not hyper-focused on a release, then I would really encourage you at some point to dip your toes into making it from scratch because it'll give you such a better appreciation and understanding of the tools you're using. And like I mentioned earlier, there are some actually unique games that just can't be made inside an engine. And I think if that's the case, obviously you're gonna have to make it yourself. If however, you're like me and your game isn't that technically crazy and you wanna actually release a game, 
for crying out loud, just use a game engine. Making games is time consuming enough as it is. Most people that are working on games will never release it. So you don't need to make it harder for yourself by also chucking in the extra workload of making a game engine. It might seem like making a game engine is a one-time cost. You just make the engine and then you can use it for all your future games. But unless your future games are gonna be in the exact same genre with the exact same features, you're going to have to work on the engine as well as the game in parallel forever. Not to mention the upfront cost of that first push to get the engine to release your first game is gonna be a stupid amount of work. And if you use a game engine, someone else is already doing all that work for you and you can just focus on the game. Obviously, I'm not the first person to go through this. So many people online say, just use an engine, and I decided to do exactly the opposite. And I'm guessing some of you will hear me say all of this and still decide to make your own engine, and who am I to judge? All I can hope that is by sharing these experiences, you can be at least a bit informed about what you're getting yourself into and what to expect. I've reached a point now where I just want Star Mining Co to be finished so that I can move on and actually start using a game engine. Thankfully, I think most of the engine stuff is out of the way and I can just hammer out gameplay and content stuff, but there's always things that drag you back to the engine side. So after Star Mining Co, I'm absolutely gonna just spend the time to learn to use an engine and then it'll be happy days. In the meantime though, I've been making heaps of progress on Star Mining Co and there will be some more devlogs coming out soon. So if you wanna see that, make sure to subscribe. And if you found this video useful, it would be really great if you could give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching, happy coding, and I hope to see you again soon.